All right. Here's what I want to do to this episode, and that is uh, when we, right now, whenever our little, whenever our little character here grabs the key, note what happens. It just disappears and the door opens. We do have the little scene transition that we put in last episode, but I want to go a, a one step further and uh, maybe add a little bit of animation to that key. But first, uh, there's another thing I want to do real quick, and that is I want to simplify the control scheme that we have. If I can find it, that would be under the horizontal movement right here. So there's a different, there's a better way to do this that I have discovered, and that is um, I'm just checking to see if this action button has been pressed. But actually, what I can do, I can set a variable. And call I'll call it dx, and I can just check. I can say input dot get action strength, and I won't get the right, and then I can subtract the left from that. So basically, it'll get the action strength in terms of a zero or a one, and that way, I can get rid of these if else statements and just use regular math here, which is uh, you know I like it better. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna do uh, left. So if you're pushing, so if you're pushing the right key, then the the the, the change in x is gonna be one. If you're pushing the left key, it's gonna be uh, negative one. And if you push both of them, you get no movement, which is exactly what we want. So instead of all this garbaggio right here, we're gonna say velocity dot x equals dx times speed. And that gets rid of, uh, let's see, what does it get rid of? Get rid of, gets rid of all of this, except we still have the sprite flip deal going on. So what we can do, we can say, as long as our dx or our x movement is not equal to zero, then we'll just set that sprite flip, oops, sprite flip, flip, flip. Sprites don't flip unless you tell them to. <laughs> flip underscore h equals and we'll just say hey if the dx is less than zero whoops hear me colons again so that that gets rid of all of this this stuff see uh and i think that's i like i think i like that better that's up to you as to whether you want to do. let's test it and make sure that it does work indeed if i go left if i go right if i push them both he doesn't move at all and note that his his flip is working correctly. So that's one thing that I wanted to. Do. The next thing uh, we're gonna we're gonna be spending some time in the game scene because that's where we're gonna do our our uh, our animation. Now currently we have the scene transition right here. So see this to do. We actually should take that out. This is all this the scene transition. Okay, like that. Um, I think what I probably want to do then is, so we, we're going to, we're fading out here. And that's all, I think that's all fine. Uh, but whenever we pick up the key right here, what we should do is, there's a couple things that we want to do. We want to take that item and actually tween it. We're also going to want to pause... We're going to want to pause. So let's let's just let's do this in little pieces. So we'll just add our pause here like we did up there with the fade cuz we do want to do that same thing. Um So basically, we want to put our stuff in pause. So as soon as he grabs a key, everything pauses and then we'll we'll use some tweens. We'll use the actually the same tween that we that we have in our game scene to make these movements. So um, let's lift up the key first. Let's just give a couple of, let's just try some stuff here. So we'll tween. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just save some time and I'm going to copy this piece because we're going to want to do something very similar to that. But instead of F, we're going to tween the item itself. So it's this that we get passed in. Instead of this, I want to actually tween the, um, and I want it to start from the item position so the starting item position and I want it to go uh, say let's say to 
like to the item position plus like a or now let's actually it's minus vector two nothing to the left let's just let's make the key go above the player so something like i don't know like 20. and let's do that fairly quickly it's like 0.25 seconds um and i think we'll, we'll leave the easing like that i think that the easing is is okay just like that um and let's see we do have vector oh yeah that's a vector two that's going to be a vector two um and let's just start that tween we'll see what it does we'll wait on it to start it and then we will do so it should lift it up and then it should pretty much immediately and actually let's pause briefly here too why not just to be like hey the key we got it yay <laughs> not to do we're going to pause briefly so if you want to pause briefly there's a nice easy ish way to do that is you can actually create a timer from the get tree when once you get the main tree you can say create a one off timer and i'm going to say let's let's do another 250 milliseconds um and then we will yield on the timer's timeout function so let's see what that does when we grab the key so let's let's run this so jump and it okay so here's here's the issue now i knew this was going to happen because you know uh what's what it is is our keys disappeared because in our pickup our base pickup we free that little feller as soon as the player touches it so what we need to do is we need to grab this and we need to say delete we need to add basically we need to add another flag so that we can have things not be deleted on pickup so we will default this to true so in other words we don't want to delete the key we want to be able to delete it manually but for the other things if delete on pickup is true then we will delete the item now what we could do here is go to the pickups go to the key scene click on this and we see delete on pickup let's turn that off so now the key should not be deleted and we should see it raise yes saw it raise and then we unpause that's exactly what we want so that's the first part of our of our little process so the next thing we want to do is we want to just type out what we want to do make the key go to the tool all right and um we're going to do something very similar to here. So what we need, we want to start at the item position. We are going to tween the position. Um, but here, we need a door position. Door. Let's just do this. Let's say level door dot position. We don't have a level door yet, but we'll we'll get there. Let's say, I don't know, six tenths of a second. Let's change this to ease as well, just for fun. Okay, so now we need this level, this door, this some kind of variable to hold this door in, right? So let's copy that name. We'll come up here. Bar. Oops. Bar. Level door. And let's say that's got to be, that needs to be a node 2D. Okay. Okay, so... Here's an advantage, right? And um, that is our door has a uh, has its own script. So let's do this. Let's take advantage. Let's take advantage of it. Um, and what what we really what we want is we this game needs to know which but it needs to know the door object every time a level is loaded. It needs to know where the door is because we want to go to the door. We want the key to go to the door. So we'll just do that in the in the door script. So what we can say is we can use the function, the ready function, and whenever we do that, we can do basically take take note of this that we've done here, which is we're calling the group game, and then we're doing on next level. And remember our our game here is in that group, but we're just going to add another function, and we'll say. Something like set door, and then we'll just say self. So basically, the door it the door itself is going to communicate to the game uh, object 
that uh, there's a new door in town. <laughs> so we will, let's see, where we'll put it right here. Game group functions, we'll put it right here. So we'll say funk on, uh, let's see, what did I call it? Let's add on to it just to be distant. Okay, so now we can say this. On set door, a new door, and we'll say uh, our level door. Level door. Door. Finish the funk just like that. Okay, so now we should have the level door, and this should actually work. So let's see. I have missed any. We, oh, well, I know what I've missed. We have to actually start the tween and then wait for it to complete. Of course, of course we do. Of course we do. And now I want to say here, because I think we want to add some more additional tween properties, but we want to wait until they're all done. We'll see. I'll show you what I mean here. Let's verify that this all works. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, we also... Once the tween is completed, we also need to delete. Did not do. So now we're now it's deleted. So some other things that we can do here, and you know, you can you can be creative with this. But say I want not only to to uh, tween or or change that position of the key and make it go towards the door. Say that I want to change its rotation as well. That is absolutely doable. So we'll start at the items rotation. And um, what we can do is just add, add, uh, I th what is this? I think it's in, I think, is it in radius? I don't even remember. But anyway, we'll see what this does. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, I think pi is just a, isn't it just a, a, com a constant? Yeah, it's just a constant. Right. Actually, no, let's do this. I believe there's actually tau in here. Good old towel. It is. It's in here. Beautiful. Let's keep the six tenths of a second. Uh, we will stay. We'll leave this. See what this does. See if I'm wrong on the degrees or what. It should rotate. And it did. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that a lot. Let's actually make it rotate two times. And let's make it come like a little bit faster of completion. A lot actually. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. Now, additionally, you know, and, and so this tween all completed will wait till both of these properties are done as opposed to uh, waiting to a particular tween to be completed. That's why we did that. At least that's my understanding. You can actually check it. Uh, I can do it. If I'm right. I believe that is correct. You can tell that it, it didn't wait for all of them to finish. Let's add one more. And again, these are all optional. However you want to do it. Let's do the scale. And let's say we'll start at the item scale. We'll end that vector 2.0. Oh my goodness. Vector. Can I not type? I can't. I can't. Vector 2.0. So we'll scale it all the way down to zero. <clears throat> Let's say, I mean, we'll leave it at this. And we'll leave it at it. Let's see what this does. So just to give you an idea of what you can do. The kind of, that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I mean, I could even scale it down to like, I don't know, one times 0 0.1 or something like that. Let's see what that does. Right now we're just having fun. We're just having lots of fun. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's good. It's tight. It's just, uh, it's it's perfect for what we're trying to do, right? Um, and uh, additionally, like I said, let's go, one, one other thing we need to check and make sure, since we changed that base, let's make sure that these guys, yeah, they're still destroyed. It's good. And love that. Loving that a lot. Now, see, one of the things we could also take a look at maybe later is, no, I never mind. I like that. It's all good. 
So there we go. That's going to wrap this one up for this time. We have added a nice little e tweening kind of juice, game juice thing along with the scene transition. So we're, we're kind of becoming more sophisticated in some of the stuff that we're doing here. So um, that's going to be it for this one, and we'll see you next time.